we have Photoshop open. Now, what I want to do is paint a blue or a red glow, whatever color, it really doesn't matter for the, the demo right now. Um, but we want to apply a glow around the edge, but how do we do that? So let me just show you a couple issues that can happen. So first, you create a new layer. Well, if you were to paint like this, it's just going to become opaque and blue in cover. So that's not going to work, all right? Um, what you'll see is you'll read a lot of books or see tutorials. People will tell you to use the color dodge tool. Okay. So to do the color dodge tool, if you come in here, what happens is if you start painting this down, if you keep painting over and over it, it'll bleach out and it bleeds. But again, that's not the effect that we really want. So the trick to this is you actually have to create or you have to paint this glow effect on a flattened image but here's the thing i don't want to flatten my image i have a bunch of layers each one of these is drawn on a different layer so what do you do so what you're going to do is you're going to hit command option shift letter e okay and that's on a mac so it would be instead of command it would use control so it should be control option shift letter e for uh pc what you'll notice it gives me a flattened layer of everything so it takes everything compresses it all in this visual where it's sitting on top now here's the thing there's two blend modes you can use when you're uh, painting with this so you can see i changed it to color dodge there's another one which is overlay there is a difference in between the two but color dodge is what you're going to use primarily but i will go to overlay and show you what it does also so a color dodge here's the key you can pick any color you want. It'll start with that color and it's gonna progressively make it get uh, lighter. But before we get started, let me just show you something. If you start with a light color, it goes straight to this white. So when you're using the color dodge, you actually wanna start with a lot darker color than you think you would need. And it's gonna create that haze of that blue color to bloom in. And just so you can see, it doesn't matter what color you pick. It's going to allow you to progressively get to a lighter color as you go to the inside. Now it's doing this because I have a flattened image. Now here's the next stage. So let me just command Z back out of there. Now, so if we come over here to the edge here, so let's say on the outside, let's say I want it, let's say cold bluish color. So if I come here, I'm just using a soft airbrush. And let's, I'm going to turn the opacity, or actually not the opacity, the flow down, okay? And what I'm going to do is make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to start to brush around the edge. And you can see, I actually might make this a little bit darker, okay? So if I start to brush this in, it's making it progressively lighter. It's not destroying my black lines that I inked in there, but it's allowing me to get this kind of glow around the edge of your form okay so what's the trick here it's color dodge i have a flattened image on top another reason why i do it this way is because let's say i just you know work really strong or even if it's something like this and i want to control the strength of how much i have that in there i turn the opacity of the layer down if necessary to make it more subtle okay so that's one way to do it. And let me just show you, I'm just gonna randomly throw um, like this orange color on this side. Let's make it a little stronger again. Okay, so we'll come around the edges. All right. And so let's say I wanna live it around the face here. Okay. So it's giving me again that warm light, all right. If I keep working it in one spot, you can see it'll progressively get lighter. Now with Photoshop, you have to brush down, pick up your pen, and then apply the pressure again with the, the paint right back down again and again to get that effect, right? That's what makes it lighter. So I'm picking, putting it down, putting it down and lift up, and I'm putting it down and lift up. And that's what's gonna allow it to get lighter as you go okay so you can see it just gave me this nice color dodged effect 
okay? All right, so if I want it to be light around edges here, I can just keep hitting it. Same thing on the other side. So what if I picked a different color like purple and I went here? So what happens if I go around the outer edges here? Look, I can add one more color to this, okay? So this allows us to get this color uh, transitions into each other. It's, you know, pretty easy. Right now, I'm just doing this in a very kind of crude, fast way just to get the point across. But uh, it's just a quick tip that I want you guys to see. Now, let me show you one more thing here. What if I want to put, um, well, let me show you how to use the overlay effect. Now, what's the difference, okay? Now, I want you to look, I'm gonna have a tip and I'm gonna go through and break down all of the blend modes and how to use them. But for what I want you to understand is I'm using a light, uh, a light blend mode where even if I use something really dark, it's still gonna uh, make everything lighter. When we start using overlay as a blend mode, it makes a difference what color you pick, the value. So if you go with something dark like this and I'm using an overlay, you'll notice it's making it darker, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to be aware of that. So if you're using overlay as the blend mode, you must make sure you're at 50% of value and up, okay? 50% of the value and up. Now, what you'll see is if I apply, let me go back to that same color initially. So if I come in here, what it's doing, it's taking all value that's in mid-range, let's say grays, okay, not white or black. It takes anything that's in the middle and it starts to shift it towards, if right now I'm a little bit lighter than 50% gray, so it's gonna push the values lighter. Even though I have color, it's gonna push it lighter. So if I apply this, it's taking those mid values in his face and they're gonna make them lighter. It's not gonna affect the black because I use black ink lines, right? So if I keep brushing in there, it will progressively keep making it lighter and lighter. Now, another thing you can do too though, is you can obviously make this lighter. You can shift the hue here a little bit, but this will also allow you to get a little bit different light effect. Now, which is better? There's no right or wrong. Uh, there's certain times you'll use one over the other. Um, so for example, um, let's say on the other side of the face, I'll go with, we'll go back with that orange color and let's come back to about here. Make the brush really big. And you can see how it creates this just nice effect. It doesn't do the same kind of uh, penetrating of the, the value of making it white. It doesn't degrade it as quickly as a color dodge. So you can think of this as more like a, uh, a bloom of light where it's a little softer in its transition. It's more subtle. Okay, but it will keep, do uh, even though it's not a dodge tool, it is actually dodging, it is making it a little bit lighter. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you. So here, I can also just switch back and I'm gonna show you something here. Keyboard shortcuts. See these, the, the menus up here? I'm gonna give you a keyboard shortcut. Shift, option, the letter D like in dog, it goes to color dodge. Shift, option, O goes to overlay. Shift, option, in like in Nancy goes to normal. So honestly, I almost never go up to the pull down menu. I'm doing it for these tips. I'm always using, I always use the, the power key, short key. So, and then again, dodge. And so now I can go back right in here and it's going to become a lot lighter just because of the nature of the dodge tool. This is really light. So remember what we said before, you want to come down here to make it darker, but you can see it now gives me some nice old highlights. So this is great, easy technique if you're doing a, a, a comic style, especially the American style comics, uh, the whole Marvel, DC, and stuff like that, uh, which I'm gonna do a whole bunch of stuff for the comics people um, a little bit later. But in the meantime, so this is just a little, real, real quick one. Um, obviously, I'm not taking this to, to a finish, but it's just allowing you to uh, essentially understand the technique, okay?
So in the meantime, I'll see you next time and uh, keep drawing and having fun digital painting. Okay, deuces. Whoa, 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 I almost forgot. I need you guys to hit subscribe, share this, uh, likes, do something for me. Help a brother get the word out. Uh, anyway, I got a lot of stuff, like I said, coming. So just again, let's try to build this community. And uh, if there's anything you need, please uh, list down below. Uh, I am launching a website that's going to have classes, tutorials, and all kinds of good stuff. So again, let me know what you need so I can help make sure you guys level your game up.